Where did it come from? What's life all about? What happens after we die? A lot of philosophical questions for a young guy, but uh, that's what was going on in my head. We didn't go to church or anything. And uh, when I was around 13, a YWAM team came around and they were knocking on doors. My dad said to them, uh, I don't want to talk to you, but you can talk to my son. And so he called me out and I talked to them and they passed my name on to the pastor. The pastor there followed up, invited me to youth group. And that's where I gave my heart to the Lord was at, uh, at that church youth group. It was kind of the height of the Jesus people days and hitchhiked down to Vancouver and I was joined in with the Jesus people because I had read about them in, uh, on t the front cover of Time magazine. All these people getting saved down in California and I, th I thought, wow, it's, you know, this is a big movement. In the late 60s, a lot of the uh, hippies, for lack of a better word, were coming to know the Lord, and so they were brought that into their Christianity. And here in town, there was a coffee house over on West Fourth Avenue, and people were, you know, toting their Bibles around and witnessing to people on the streets. We lived in community, shared our money, <laughs> all kinds of things like that. I will serve you, Lord. If you wanted to go into full-time ministry, that, that was a good leadership track, was to go to Bible college. So that's what I did. Pastored for a few years up north, different places on native reserves. That's where I got a love for First Nations people. I ended up here in Vancouver wanting to plant a church here. I was driving a school bus at the time. Uh, one morning, I had a school bus out in front of my place and got up early, and there was a dead body in front of my school bus on the ground. I just freaked and I phoned the, the police. They came by and they just kind of looked and covered over, it was a woman, and they covered her over with a sheet and. And then they started talking about the hockey game and the police looked at me and they said uh, they could tell that I was like visibly shaken still and it's okay. She was just a drug addict. The nickname down here is called Pain and Wastings because this is the last stop before people hit a coffin. So people, this is like ground zero for the fentanyl crisis. This was the ground zero for the missing word women's crisis with the whole Robert Picton case. Uh, when people come down here, you are literally on a one-way track straight into a grave. God just so powerfully spoke through that that I wasn't to have my church in some nice neighborhood in Vancouver, but that I should come down East Hastings Street here. Indigenous people in Vancouver make up about 4% of the population here, but they make up 38% of the survival sex trade down here. And that's due to poverty, addiction, human trafficking. So the church has been here for 25 years in this location. It's affectionately called the the hot dog church by everybody. Since 1995, we've given out uh, more than a million hot dogs. So it's a place where people can come in and get some food. At the front, we have music playing and people sharing testimonies. And, and then I'll share something from the Word as well. And it, so it's like a church, but not like a regular church. There is coming a day. Tragedy hit me in January 27, 2003. I, my son tragically passed away and um, I was here. And uh, I just had to, I knew that there was no way out. 
but but to go to the Lord for strength in prayer and the street church ministry of Fourth Square here they, they stood by me in, in through that time. Come to know who the Holy Spirit is by studying the name. What I sort of saw across the land, uh, a lot of reserves have churches, but they're typically pastored by a non-Indigenous person. First Nations Bible College, it's an inner city program. It's free tuition. We do the same material that they, they do in a regular Bible college. Well, I'm coming back for my third year in the fall because I love the Lord. He has done so much for me and, and I want it all. I'm a graduate of First Nations Bible College. As assistant pastor, I come here. I set up on Tuesdays and Thursdays for the Bible College. I make them their lunches. I serve the food. I wash the dishes. I mop the floor. I help Pastor Annie any which way he needs help with. There's 700 First Nations communities across Canada. Opportunity to church plant. And the best leadership for a First Nations church is a First Nations person. Life is not a stalemate. It can't stay at a standstill. It has to keep getting better. And I've proven it, you know, God's proven it to me from being a drug addicted survival sex worker to becoming an assistant pastor. Life can only get better. It's a blessing to be a part of this ministry, to, to share this, this, this vision with, with my pastor. And I stand behind him all the way. I've been here 25 years and um, they have to carry me out of here feet first. <laughs> I just love it, and I love working with people. It's very re rewarding. Thanks for checking out 100 Hotly Street. If you were inspired by the story you heard today, subscribe to our page and check out thousands of other life-changing stories we've shared.